Ladies and gentlemen, Matthew Melton here, and today we're going to be talking about a major milestone we just crossed in the making of our new album, Dream Machines, yet to be titled Third Album. We have completed the recording of the drums, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you some samples of the drum sound we got, also going over which microphones we used to record the drums, and just sort of checking in on where we're at with this particular recording project. Not only did we complete the recording of the drums on all of the songs for our new record, but the drums came out really good and I'm happy about it. The foundation has been poured. Will Axe came in and totally crushed it. If you remember in our last video, I'll link it uh, down in the description, he flew in all the way from California to do the drum tracks for a large batch of songs, and of course recording all drum tracks directly to analog tape. Um, my trusty Tascam 38, our new local drummer Quinn came in next and busted out a couple tracks as well. Great to have him on board. And what we're doing is documenting the recording process of this album in a little bit more detail than previously. So if video content about a band recording their record on analog tape interests you, subscribe to our YouTube channel and you get a sneak peek into our recording process, all the challenges, the breakthroughs, you'll love it here. So the drum performances we just got were great. And I'm also really pleased with the drum sound I was able to achieve. Uh, check out a little clip of this. Let's talk about microphones. I utilized a few of my secret weapon works on everything mic, this one right here, the Lanier 250, among some other vintage microphones, all vintage. I just don't trust new mics, you know what I mean? Uh, also, they were all dynamic mics. Uh, six mics in total, kick, snare, rack, floor, all close mic'd, and then two overheads, and all in a very dry 1970s style drum sound. Carpet on the floor, foam on the walls, curtains, you know how we do it here. And all this went down right here in my cozy home studio known as Fuzz City, which has actually existed in multiple locations all over the place, spanning the past decade plus. Uh, I've recorded various bands, albums, and singles to tape, as well as all of our own stuff. But this incarnation of Fuzz City is the best sound producing space I've ever had. Uh, two rooms, this larger main room, and then a separate drum room, we call it the live room. And as you can see, plenty of reflection eliminating foam treatment on the walls. Can you tell I'm happy here? I'm in my element. We got Will in here. He actually lived in here uh, in the studio for a few days while we recorded. And essentially how we went about it was first, we planned and planned and planned. Planned out all the parts of the songs over the phone before he got here. We would have these two and three hour long phone sessions, dialing everything in, talking about the parts, referencing drum beats. I mean, we really put in the work in preparation for recording. That step is so important. I don't think I've ever prepared this much for anything recording project was. He gets here, we bounce down the click tracks and the scratch tracks all down to two tracks on the tape, tracks one and two. Uh, then six tracks for drums, routed the headphone signal into the other room on the ceiling. We're getting organized up in here. So six mics on the drums, including four or Lanier 250s, which is my favorite mic if you're looking for a really good vintage dynamic mic to try out. Not very expensive for the sound you can get with them. They sound good. I used these on the snare, rack tom, floor tom, and as the left overhead mic for the crash and hi-hat zone. And then on the right overhead to capture the ride cymbal, I mixed it up and used an Electro Voice 635. Not mine, a loner I got from my buddy Landon. He plays in the band Prismatic Death, formerly also of uh, the band Lizard Lords. And he's a Tascam 388 operator like myself. And you should check them out sometime. I'll drop a link down in the description. And uh, for the kick drum mic, I used an old AKG D190ES. 
face, took off the front head, placed the mic off axis, of course, pointed at the point of contact. And let's check it out. Here is the drum sound we got. I'm just gonna skip around and check out a few different pieces of it. We got it all bounced in from tape using an eight channel RCA to quarter inch snake. Let's check it out. All right, let's take a look here. Sounds good. <clears throat> you like that Lanier 250 on the snare? Symbols are nice and splashy. And just a really forceful inspired performance by Will. He really did a good job. <clears throat> Tom's came out great. And he brought in these Roto Toms, and we used them in a few spots, and they're awesome. <laughs> I never would have thought to use Roto Toms. He actually flew with them on the airplane. I feel like I'm getting there on the snare sound with that really good pop to it. Crack. Gotta pop. Good in driving. And what you're hearing is just the scratch tracks. Those obviously will be removed. Gotta love some Will Axe drums. Hear those toms? Here we overlaid the roto toms. <laughs> it works for that particular spot. We overlaid an additional cymbal swell. Oh, check out this bill coming up. Mm. <laughs> so good. Let's hear that again.
crushed it. Will and I both took the whole recording process very methodically. We were on the same page, more so than usual. Uh, one by one, we'd run through a song a few times, lay a take down, come ba- all come back into the room and gather around and listen to it, talk about what was happening, always checking in with the singular vision for the sound of the album that we had conjured up, the vision. And that's really the most important step is to have sonically visualized what the drum sound should be. It can't be random. It has to be specifically realized. You have to think about it and you have to have that vision in mind and cross check what's happening with that vision throughout the process. And sometimes you have to flex away from your initial vision, but you have to have given it serious thought. You got to decide what you want it to sound like beforehand. I think that's, I think the drums are the most important element of an album or, or a song. And I think the rest of this recording is going to go so much better because we really took the time to make sure the drums were correct and sounding good. Will showed up very well rehearsed, very well prepared. I came prepared and all that preparation really made a big difference as one by one, the song started falling into place. And now we have everything captured on tape and where we're at now couldn't be a better start for the production of this record, which is a very important album to us. And um, with that, I'm gonna wrap this video up, check back for my next album recording video where we'll be mixing the drums in Logic Pro and bouncing the final stereo mix back down to a new tape on tracks seven and eight, giving Doris and myself six open tracks to record basically everything else on the record, trying to stay as much on the Tascam 388 as possible. Thanks for being with us. Chime in with any input in the comments and we'll see you on the next one. Hello, I'm Jesus Christ. And I'm here with an important message about my favorite band, Dream Machine. They're currently working on their third album, but they need your help to make it happen. Matthew and Doris Melton played me some of the new demos, and it's already sounding heavenly. So, if you don't want to go to hell, you should consider joining their cause by donating to them on Patreon. Link in the description. P.S. A special message for Dream Machine's haters. I know many of you lied about Matthew and Doris, you're all going straight to hell.